Glory to God. Father, as we go into the word to learn at your feet, open our eyes, O oh Lord. Cause us to see and understand what you're saying to us. Give us light. Give us understanding. Give us illumination of heart and mind. And let your name be glorified. We bless you. We honor you. We exalt you. Because you are a good God to us. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Glory to God. All right, today we're going into the study. Um, let me try and just post it up there for you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So today we are looking at the wise vessels, the fool. And we'll look at that for the rest of the Saturdays of this month of um, May. I will read um, three scriptures here. Proverbs 1.17, it reads, Surely in vain is net spread in the sight of the bird. Verse 22. How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And scorners delight in scorning. And fools hate knowledge. Fools hate knowledge. And then in Proverbs in chapter 2, from verse 2, he says, So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lifted up thy voice for understanding. If thou seekest uh, a silver and searchest for her uh, as eat treasure, then shalt thou, thou, then, then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord God, for the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth, cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up wisdom for the righteous, is the buckler to them that walk uprightly. I read the devotional. Foolishness is heavily condemned all through scriptures, and we are warned strongly of the consequence of walking or sitting in the seat of the fools. Many believers just assume that they are wise because they are saved. However, it is possible to be saved and still be a fool and reap the reward of foolishness also. And that's serious. Serious, very, very serious. That I'm saved, I'm born again, I'm a child of God, and then I'm still reaping the rewards of a fool. And that's what God wants us to study about. He want, doesn't want us to reap the results of fools. He doesn't want us to reap the uh, uh, reward that goes to the fool. So he's teaching us, be wise. And we need to really look at scriptures and find out what it takes to be wise, particularly what it takes to be a fool. So that I can look into my ways, my behavior, my lifestyle, and see if there's any way I'm acting foolishly. Because foolishness, you know, can creep, can, you know, can just subtly get its way into our behaviors, and we wouldn't know unless we have knowledge about it. It is therefore important that we study and I mean, study to find out what makes one a fool and avoid such ways and what makes one wise and pursue such ways also. To pursue the ways of the wise in heart, in motive, in attitude, mindset, behavior, and lifestyle. Assumption does not do it. It is set right by knowledge. So it means you can't assume that you are just wise. You only know you are wise if you set out yourself to know, to have knowledge of what it means to be wise. 
And knowledge also of what it means to be a fool, to make sure that none of those ways are in your life. None of the attitude, the motive, heart, mindset of the fool is with you. You must have knowledge. It's not by assuming. You must get knowledge. <laughs> One of the first lessons about the ways of the foolish and the wise is that the fools hate knowledge while the wise seek and cry after knowledge and understanding. So check your own way. Do you cry for knowledge and understanding? Or do you hate knowledge and understanding? I was saying to someone some time ago, I said, I found this out that um, most, let me not say most, some Christians don't want to know anything about God. They don't want to read the Bible. I mean, teach them the Bible. They'll be looking at you like, are you crazy? Come on, stop praying. It's prayer that I need. All right. Why? Because they assume they know it. That attitude already shows elements of foolishness. You can't assume you know it all. There was a time I had the element of this foolishness. You know, because I've been preaching for years. I've been studying the Bible for years. So I think I, I, knew, I knew some things. And then I, uh, we, we moved into a new place and I had to be attending church because I wasn't pastoring. So for the first time in a long time in my life, I had to be sitting there as a member of church. <laughs> Amazing God, how he teaches us. I mean, somebody will say, well, what's, what's tough about that? Uh, well, you wouldn't know until you are pastored and taught people every Sunday for at least 10 years. And I'm talking about over 10 years. Teaching every Sunday. Every Sunday. There's no Sunday I wasn't preaching or teaching somewhere. And here am I sitting down in a church where I am a member. I'm not a pastor. I'm not part of the leaders. I'm not part of the ministers. I am a simple member. And I have to listen. And I will tell you, the first feeling was that I will be listening, trying to be blessed, and I was not blessed. Because the things that were being taught felt shallow for me. And I didn't know it was the attitude of foolishness that was still hiding somewhere. <laughs> and then one day God said, so these people can't bless you. I said, God, I don't know what's going on. He said, you have to humble yourself. So I prayed, God, I humble myself, please. And then from that day, I mean, I remember the first few Sundays, my wife would be the one patting my back because she could see, I, I, I think she could see it all over my face that this man is so bored to death. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing to him, God? She will be patting my back, <laughs> you know, in the service. <laughs> Beautiful woman. I'm telling you, you know, and then, booyah, it changed. And then I was sitting in the same service that looked so boring. And I'm so blessed. And I'm excited after church. Why? Foolishness was cast out. Foolishness was cast out. Wisdom came in. Life changed. I was in the service in that church at one time. And I was sitting with some people who had been to our Bible school. Because we were running Bible school at that time. And who had had some of our teachings and they felt those teachings were deep, you know, were bad. Geez, that, ah, yeah, you know. And then they, there was this um, Sunday, it was a youth, a young guy that was teaching and everybody was, you could see that everybody in church was bored. It wasn't any of their pastors that was preaching. It was just this guy from the youth department, you know, and he was just struggling to get his message across. And I was taking notes. <laughs> the, the person sitting to, to my right. <laughs> you know, my wife, I, I can't remember where my wife was sitting, but the person sitting on the other side was saying, after a while, because the person had been to our Bible school, the person said, Pastor Lashir, what are you writing? I said, the message said, what is the guy saying? <laughs> Sorry for, for laughing like this. <laughs> you know, what is the guy saying? But I was taking notes <laughs> because foolishness had left. Listen, I'll tell you this. God wants us to have that ultimate 
humility and bowing for knowledge. Fools hate knowledge. They don't want knowledge. They don't seek knowledge. And I'm telling you, there are some Christians that all they want you to, all they want you to do is just pray. They just want the miracle. So for them, I tell you, and some of them don't even know. Some of them will tell you, no, 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 I don't see it that way. But that's it. That's what it is, really. God is a means to an end for them. They, God is something they use. God is somebody they can use. Just like they use this person, they use that one, they use this one, they use that one. The one they can reward, they reward, you know, to be able to use them. So, God, what do you want? You want me to give you money? Oh, you want me to bless in my pocket? I'll give to my pastor. Oh, yeah, 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 what I want from you. So, God is just a means to an end. God is not someone to pursue, someone they want to be like, someone they want to wash, I mean, uh, spend time with. So, all they seek is prayer. They don't see. If you're somebody that doesn't like reading the Bible, you don't like going to the Word of God, you know, all you want is prayer. You are a big fool. Permit me to call you that this morning. That may insult you, but don't worry. I'm trying to help you out. I'm not calling you a fool because I'm intentionally hurting you or harming you, but I'm telling you who you are. I'm just trying to reveal what is happening. You must have hunger for truth. You must have hunger for truth, for the word of God, because you must want to know this God. You must desire to know him. You must want to know him. That desire must be in your spirit. And that desire draws you to the Bible. So every time you're reading the Bible, you are, you are, you are pressing to know more about the Father that is now called your Father, the God that is now called your God. Fools hate knowledge. The wise seek for knowledge and understand. They cry for it. They hunger for it. They press for it. All right? God has declared 10 days. We've had nine days, so we have eight days to go from today. Of what feast? Go to God and ask questions. And then look for the answers in the scriptures. As you are studying, it will bring you answers. Some of the answers will come as you are studying. Some of the answers will come by inspiration, revelation that will be bringing to you. God wants you to do that. You know? So, fools, they don't like knowledge. Having a lazy attitude and habit towards acquiring knowledge through reading, watching, educational and positive informational, ma informational materials is what makes one to move towards being wise and choosing things that are um, want to move towards being wise, all right? While choosing things that have low quality and have, uh, having dislike for knowledge is what makes one to lean towards becoming a fool. What that's simply saying is when it now comes to earthly knowledge, which is still part of the knowledge of God, because earthly knowledge is human beings studying nature, humans studying animals, and coming up with what they have found out. And all those things they have found out were the things that God knew that made him to make the animal, make the bird, make the sky, make the mountain, make the waters, the rivers. So everything we've discovered in nature is part of God's knowledge. All right? Now, the, the, that, that's part of the general knowledge of God. But if you want to know the intimate knowledge of God, which we call the wisdom of God, those are now the ways of God himself, not the way of the lion. The way of the lion is part of the knowledge of God, which God now used to make the lion. But if you want to know the ways of God, that's the wisdom of God. That's the intimate knowledge that God wants you to have, which you get from the scriptures, all right? But now coming to general knowledge, some people don't even have desire for knowledge. They don't want to know Jack. So how do we see that? We only feed the things that entertain us instead of the things that educate us. And there's nothing wrong with entertainment. Entertainment is not a sin. That doesn't even make you a fool. But if all you see constantly is just entertainment and your heart does not look at all for anything that educates, that improves your exposure, improves your knowledge, improves your understanding of things around you, you don't know, you don't ask, and you don't start to find out, oh, you are a big fool. And so repent, fool, and be wise. So, Pastor, why are you rebuking me this morning? Sorry. I love you. <laughs> I still love you. 
I'm not doing this to hurt. I'm doing this to awaken us. I've told you how I exhibited some measure of foolishness. And I see locate some foolishness here and there, and I kick them out every time I see them. I kick them out. God wants us to keep kicking out foolishness until we are totally and completely in the frequency of the wise. Because foolishness doesn't bring good things for us. A fool, because of their hardness of heart and laziness of heart, also says that there is no God. And we've seen quite a number of them. <laughs> you know, every time somebody says there's no God, he has just declared himself to be a big fool. He's declaring this because of the laziness of his heart to pursue the ways of righteousness. Some of the people who say there's no God, the reason why they are saying there's no God is because they are lazy in heart to pursue righteousness. They are lazy in heart to accept forgiveness. You can't chase righteousness. You can't even accept forgiveness. So where do you stand? The only thing you can oh, there is no God. So I don't even believe there's any sin. Uh, <laughs> Now, some of them, some of them are saying there's no God because they've not found God in the physical things. And then we are saying, come, God is not in the physical. You can only contact. No, I don't want to have everything. No, no, no. That's pride. They are not, they, they are saying there's no God because of their pride. Their pride in not wanting to accept. Some of them feel they know so much. Maybe they are scientists or they are uh, PhD holders or professors of X, Y, Z. And they feel that you, that you don't, it, what do you have? You say you have BS, BS, what, C, Y, Z. You are talking to a professor here. What do you know? So they think nobody can teach them. So they made themselves a big fool. Why? Because they are pride. I put them in that position. Yeah. A fool says in his heart, there's no God. Laziness is that to seek righteousness and all of the other things I've mentioned. Anyone who claims to be a believer that shows no fear of God in the way they live is leaning towards foolishness and that's a warning if your lifestyle does not show the fear of god what's the fear of god let me tell you what the fear of god is the consciousness that god is here now and that consciousness making me to do and behave in respect of him that's the fear of god the fear of god is not what people to be saying no 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 in the scriptures, God even tested it out for us to see that it doesn't work. Not because he doesn't know it doesn't work. He tested it out, put it there for us, plain, plain, so that we know it doesn't work. That dread, fear, it can crush me. It will destroy me. That is not the fear of God. That is the being afraid of God. This dread for God. Yes. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, really, in a sense. But that is not equal to fear. Let me give you an example. Physically, my wife cannot beat me. She can't physically beat me up. She can't physically, you know, I mean, harm me. Physically, I'm stronger. Okay? So, I travel for a couple of weeks. All kind of beautiful girls all over the place. I could have gone out and be sleeping with them, but I don't. Why? Because I fear God and I have respect for my wife. That respect for my wife is fear for my wife, but it's not fear that she's going to beat me up. It's not fear of any sort in the physical. It's just that I respect her. I respect our relationship. And so I'm not going to do those rubbish. I'm not even going to allow you to come near. That's the same thing. That's what the true fear is, that respect. Not because the person can cross you or destroy you, but because you just respect your relationship and you respect his likes and dislikes. How did God prove to us that the one that you're afraid, uh, it doesn't work? The Israelites, God spoke to them and he really ter terrified them in the speaking. Thunder, lightning, boom, 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 boom. Even Moses said, the, 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 Scenery was so awesome that even me, that I've been talking to him for a long time, was afraid. I was scared. Moses said that. And as soon as God finished saying the Ten Commandments that he said, just Ten Commandments, he didn't finish all the laws, about 600 and something laws. He couldn't. The people ran to me and said, Oh God, Moses, please don't let him speak to us again. Please. 
let him tell you anything he wants to tell us you come and tell us we'll listen to you okay is that okay please please we we'll beg you please tell him he doesn't need to speak to us we don't need to hear his voice let him tell you everything because they were scared so what happened they were scared though they were scared of this god that can crush them and all that they were scared though. 40 days after moses went up to hear the remaining of the commandments moses was there for 40 days before the end of 40 days they built a calf the very first thing god said thou shall have no other god before me thou shall not make any image to watch it the first two things god said they broke it right there less than 40 days after why because when you don't know someone how do you respect them they don't know god they didn't have any relationship that was intimate with him he was just their provider their god that they called to in time of trouble that was all so and that's why we are saying the 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 the, the, the fear of god is respect for god if you are in a place and your behavior doesn't show that you have reverence for the father and your, your, your father and your god being there and you're not showing it it shows you don't have a fear if you and your daughter or your son go out and your son begins to behave in a way that is disrespectful to you towards some other people and you're saying son watch now son and he said, no, that, 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 please don't come into this. And he just kept, you know what your son has showed you? He has no fear for you. That's what it is. He has no fear for you. If he has fear and he respects you, he won't do those things. He will say, you're lucky my dad is here. And that's the way it is. In our lifestyle, do we show the fear of God? In the way we handle matters, do we show the fear of God? Because when you don't show the fear of God, you are tilting to, towards foolishness. The fool says in his heart, there's no God. We must never say there's no God by our lifestyle. All right? That's what that is saying. So to fear God is acknowledged. To fear God is to acknowledge by, our, by lifestyle and behavior that God is with you. And there are things that you cannot do in his presence when he's there. Many who say they fear God and still do ab ab abominable things, having little or no, uh, that shows little or no fear of Him at all. Lack of the fear of God is a demonstration that that person only assents to the existence of God in his mind, but does not believe in the existence of God there and there. Because you do. In that place, the things you will never do if you really believe that God is with you. I believe God is everywhere and he's with me everywhere and he's watching whatever and he's seeing whatever I'm doing. So it dictates how I behave. So sometimes I be, I, I mean, sometimes, or let me say in some situations, that's where I should say, it. in some situations, I behave in a way that people say, wow, how can you behave like that? And you, you didn't feel any, you, are you saying you are not, and, and you are so calm and you are so, it's because I know he's there, he's watching me. I'm not doing it because of the people. I'm not doing it to impress the people. They go, oh, so that they will know that I'm a man of God. No. I'm doing it because I'm conscious he's there, he's watching me. He's seeing how I'm going to handle the situation. And so as I'm there, in my mind, everybody's looking at me. In my mind, I'm saying, God, please. <laughs> this is a situation you need to help me because, I mean, I mean, the way this person is speaking, I, I mean. And then strength comes. Why? Because my actions are because I believe he's there. The fear of God determines whether you're tilting towards being completely the wise that you are by birth or you are adopting foolishness and i pray there will be no foolishness in any of our lives i pray you walk in purity pray this prayer with me and say father walk in me in the willing and the doing of acknowledging your presence with me all the time and behaving the way i will behave in your presence in the name of jesus i receive your grace Thank you for planting your fear in me. And thank you for planting in me the hunger for knowledge. 
in Jesus name. Pray that in the Holy Ghost of God. Akias kuduko. Eriara ba mosquito fi apedi kani wanyashi. Kakwa le piasito engalado. Oriaga ba piko toki engalazungo pambusko. Fiara katushko papi kana nalo. Skoraba rea bosko toki nianda skedusho. In Jesus mighty name, we are prayed. Can you say these words with me? Say in the name of Jesus. I'm born of God. Wisdom is in me. I am the wise. I love knowledge. I love the wisdom of God. I cry after the knowledge of the Almighty. I seek for God. The hunger for God is in me. The thirst for God is in me. I walk in wisdom. I cry after knowledge. I am filled with the fear of God. And I walk in the majesty of the King of Kings. I am the Lord of Lords in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that God is glorified in my life. I am the blessed. God is glorified in my life. I am the healed. God is glorified in my life. I am the protected. God is glorified in my life. I live a long life. God is glorified in my life. Whatever I do is blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.